Hey guys, welcome back. Today it's about creating note informations from monophonic audio material. Inside Ableton Live, you have like this, this small little function where you right click on an audio track and then you create a MIDI clip from it. We don't have anything like this in Bitwig Studio, but we have the zero crossings module and I'll show you how you can create notes from audio material. Not only from note wave files, you can also input, of course, your a microphone and use it in real time and basically sing and create notes at the same time. So why not do it? It's a nice exercise. It's a fun way of learning the grid. So let's start. So we have an audio track here with some random uh, generic vocal. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. So we want to convert this here to some notes in the uh, yeah in the editor, and we create here a new audio track, a new instrument track, and we need of course a receiver, an audio receiver to get um, the sound from the vocal track here into the second track. Let's here use the pre uh, the pre source. Um, and you can not only use vocals, you can also use um, strings or jellos, something like this, um, to get some notes out. The important thing is that it's actually monophonic content, so polyphonic content like chords doesn't work, but monophonic, it's, it's just fine. And we get this here now to the second track, so maybe just mute this here. No, no, no! And we add here yeah, a spectrum device. We can see what's going on. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. As you can see, we need to get rid of all these overtones here, all these harmonics. We only want a fundamental frequency. I mean, we can do this, of course, by using EQs. So we cut everything above C4, maybe. E1, and that's the vocal range. Maybe you can E3. And when we see here this on an um, oscilloscope, You can see it's a nice smooth signal instead of this. No, no, no. You can see a lot of value changes, a lot of small little uh, noises on top of the fundamentals. So we get rid of this here with EQ. And maybe we can use two EQs or three EQs to make this even cleaner. So this is what we want to analyze. So we have here the audio receiver. Maybe we use a chain device. It's just an empty container. But inside this container, we can now hook up here or bring in the audio receiver. Chain device we can call audio to MIDI or notes. It's actually in notes inside Bitwig. There are no MIDI. It's no MIDI inside Bitwig. Um, audio to notes, and then we need probably a note grid here. Note grid, bam. And inside here, we can use the side chain to get the notes or to get the audio in from the audio receiver. Audio receiver out. There it is. We use the oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. So now we get basically the filtered output of the audio receiver here. And the audio receiver gets the signal from the tri and tri vocals audio track here. And now we use the zero crossings module. And this one gives us already some pitch signals. But you can still see here a lot of parameter chumps or value chumps. 
So we need to smooth this out, yeah, maybe with the average. It's much, much smoother now. Okay, so now that we have this, we need also something to create um, the gate signal from it. So we use maybe an envelope follower. This one here. Um, but we need to create actually a trigger signal. So maybe we use, let me see what we can do. Um, maybe you can just output this here to the gate signal. It should be fine. And we can use an, a volume knob here. Change actually the threshold because everything that's above 0 0.5, this line here, is interpreted, is in the, yeah, the, the grid basically makes it to a, a gate signal or an, a 1. And everything below 0 0.5 is a 0. So when we change the gain here, we can influence how much, how many nodes we create. That so should be fine. And now we can also output the amplitude here as a pressure signal. And when we add here pulley synth, and you can use any VST synth, you don't need to use the Bitwig synth here. Um, we should get out here some, some sound and also can use the tumbler here. The amplitude modulates basically cut off. Maybe you should also use here an average signal. Let's use this one. So you can basically smooth out the signal a bit more so it's not that it's not that drastic changes in it. Oh we need actually also to hook up here the output. Here, yeah, peak limiter to get a more consistent signal. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. And maybe you shift this here up to C2 to C4. No, 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 oh yeah. No, 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 oh yeah. So you see, um, it kind of works. It's not perfect and it doesn't work 100% uh, all the time. Um, but the hard part is that you have to fiddle around with all these small little settings here. To find the right amount of fall rate, rise rate, average, average smoothing, um, and maybe limiting and EQing here the right vocal range uh, to extract the clean fundamental sine wave from the vocals or from the audio material. Um, and that's probably also the longest or the, the, the hardest part of it to, to maybe invest some time to find the right amount of 
values for all these small little devices. Um, but you can see you can get actually something out of it. And also, you see an audio track and just record uh, from the audio to notes here from the channel above. Record here the second track. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. And then you yeah, watch this here on the MIDI editor. You can see we have basically created your multiple notes. And the pitch changes for some of these gates. So the pitch changes while a gate is active. And we bring in here basically micro pitch. You also can change then, of course, if you want to. Just to show you this, um, instead of using here the vocals, you can also use the audio track and use your microphone as an input. Um, I have your mono in. When I switch my microphone on and switch also on OBS my vocals out so you don't, so I don't sidechain actually the output, you can hear that he can actually sing and yeah, bring in some notes this way. So it's not perfect, but you can see we get just some notes with the micro pitch also. Um, it breaks down here in some upper frequencies, but you can counter this a, a bit more here with the EQs. Like I said, you have to find a sweet spot for filtering out the right amount of frequencies. Um, but you will, I'm sure you, fin you, you find it out. You will fiddle around and uh, find the right spot for your vocals or for your vocal range. So yes, this is maybe not a perfect out-of-the-box experience like you get in Ableton Live, but it's your effect, you can customize it. For instance, you can exchange the EQ2 for maybe a spectral filter like Peel by Z-Plane, or before you send your vocals into the note grid, you pitch correct it with pitch map or something different. Um, so you can customize it and it's your own little effect um, that you can make perfect for your um, use case. And it's also a nice experience you gain or you gain experience in uh, creating grid patches. You learn a lot alongside the way how to treat vocals, how to treat signals. And it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun to do. So give it a try. Please leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment if you have some questions. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.